Good place now. Relax, breathe, smile. You've entered into your element, the home of origin, the home of intelligence and beauty, where relevant topics are discussed, where what you think counts, and where superior is the norm. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. I like Perspectives with Ashley Burgess, but I prohibit my workers from listening to it. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And we're discussing straight up honesty and raw happiness, how to get both in your life without the yuck factor. Honesty and happiness are the two things that people most want. You hear it on a constant basis. I just wish people were honest with me. I just wish I was happy. I don't see why I can't be happy and I don't see why people have to lie and cheat and not be honest. I think if we knew what others were actually struggling struggling with, it would actually offer us a proper perspective. It would allow us to comprehend, perhaps, their actions, their general attitude. It doesn't make it right what's going on. But you could seem to maneuver yourself around the situation and honestly understand why somebody in your life is acting or talking or speaking a certain way to you, and you could understand what is driving them to this direction. Bill, how are you doing tonight? I am doing wonderful. I also have issues, so uh, I I think you picked a good topic tonight. Issues! (laughs) I I have issues! I have a basket of issues. I do. But uh, but yeah, I mean, also too, if uh, uh, somebody is being mean to me, and uh, I don't necessarily uh, think it gives an excuse to... You know, be a jerk to me, but maybe if I understood where they were coming from, then, uh, you know, maybe I could help them out or something. I agree. Maybe we'd also not make such assumptions because I think we have a tendency of making these assumptions based on the way that somebody's delivering a message or the way that someone's acting. Because you know what they say about assumptions. Makes an ass out of you and me. There you go. Yay! <laughs> It's a long story, folks. It's, it's a little <laughs> bit of a backstory. Yeah. Um. The, the the kind of the easiest things make us laugh here. You know, we're 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 an easy going. You know, good. Group. We we're easily entertained. We're also easily distracted. No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it just depends. I mean, if there were cats walking by the studio, we'd probably be pretty distracted. Probably. But there's not because we're like up here in the sky somewhere. But we'll we'll deal with that later. Keenan, how you doing? Oh, I'm chilling. Uh, swiping through uh Tinder, just just swiping right. Just the entire time. On See, I'm, I haven't been able to use Tinder. Be married all I mean, all this it, it, time. Doesn't, it, it, it doesn't work, but, <laughs> you know. Oh, you, how just, many pictures do you get to put up on that? I don't know. How I, many pictures have you put up on there? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. You don't remember? I mean, you don't no. number them? You know, you don't or haven't organized them? I don't remember. Like file? I said, I just swipe. Keen at the beach. No, I just. Teach I, and clang. I haven't, I haven't <laughs> been to the beach since Hawaii. Since um, Hawaii? Yeah, since Hawaii. I don't, I don't, I don't really go to the beach. You're not a beach guy. I'm not a nature guy, period. <laughs> I'm just not. Trees, grass, forget about it. I prefer Keenan to- likes he, concrete. He wants concrete and, and polluted air. Yeah, I'm on, yeah, concrete and big buildings. You Man, know. he fits in here. He fits he in anywhere in the country. So let's talk about the straight up honesty and raw happiness. And I was being honest about it. Like he is being it. honest. And he's being honest about it. There you it. go. He's not putting on airs. You know, how to get both without the yuck factor. So we know that everybody's struggling with things. We know that we don't know exactly what. And sometimes we make these decisions because we assume that everybody's just doing well, that everything's going perfect and that their life must be amazing, but they're just taking that out on us or or just making an example out of us. And I, I just recently asked a question on social media, on Facebook, actually. What's the biggest issue that you're dealing with in your life? And I didn't really know what kind of responses I was going to receive. Which, by the way, we should say, Ashley, that uh, we are currently uh, blogging live on Facebook and Twitter. At Ashley Burgess, or Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. There you go. And My Twitter handle the same, Ashley Burgess. So, I mean, this is proof positive that, yes, we are paying attention to what you, the listeners, are telling us. So we're going to read it over the air. So we encourage you, as we go along, to go ahead and post your, your thoughts about uh, what we're talking about tonight. You know, one person, you know, said that their biggest issue was their weight, that they were overweight. And and I think... 
Just out of curiosity, is this person male or female? Male. Okay. Two males. Two different males agreed to that same situation. And I think when weight, and, and, and I think you have to think about weight in general, is when does it actually apply to your health? Um, I, I think you can be pleasantly plump. I think you can have a little bit of weight on you, but I think that when it becomes an actual health issue, that would be your biggest issue. Well, and you know how I feel about that, Ashley. I mean, uh, you know, especially when it comes to women, there's an impossible standard of thinness where I think most women are at least 10 to 20 pounds underweight. And I think and men, though, don't really worry about their weight until it's actually until, affecting their health. Right. You know, because, uh, you know, uh, uh, heart disease and, and uh, other stuff like that. Of course, we, you know, science, science has shown that women are just as susceptible, if not more, to heart disease as uh, as men are. But, yeah, I mean, and also just for your general well-being. I mean, if it, it's okay if you're carrying around a couple extra pounds. But uh, if it gets to the point where, you know, all of a sudden you got to go buy new wardrobe of clothes and, and it's, you know, you lose energy and you get winded really easy, you got to do something about it. Also, if your knees are taking on, I mean, like, you know, our knees and our joints can only really hold up a yeah. certain amount of weight. And, and, and when you're starting to break down those joints, that's a problem. Well, I mean, you also want to be able to shop off the rack because getting custom clothing is pretty expensive. I mean, well, here's the thing. I mean, like, I, I'm i just one who really cannot speak about being overweight because I've never been overweight in, an entire day in my life. Um, my offspring will never be overweight. Um, that's just my metabolism, just as how it is. So to me, it's like, it, it all depends. Like, I, I really have to see that person when they say, yes, my issue is weight. Because, you know, we all see those people day in and day out. They always say how they got to lose five pounds. It's like everyone's reading from the same script once again. Everyone is either trying to lose five or ten pounds. And they're doing whatever they can to lose this five or ten pounds. But the thing is, though, I mean, they're not even thinking about their health because that number on the scale is only telling you how much mass you're taking up. It's not really dictating your health at all because you could be skinny and still be unhealthy. I have a scale, actually, that's pretty cool that does actually fat and it does body fat index and everything. It what about all... cholesterol? I already have well, my there cholesterol you go. tested. Yeah. I have very, very low cholesterol. I don't have a problem with cholesterol. But, yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people don't realize those kind of things. And a lot of people – and women can be a tendency of being skinny flabby where they don't have any muscle mass at all. Mm -hmm. And they are very tiny. They're just walking skeletons. I mean, I, I just – And all they know. do is get on the treadmill here and there and they don't know why they don't, don't have any muscle. Yeah, well, it's because exactly. you need to gain muscle. You don't need to be doing cardio and eating like crap. Yeah, you know? and the thing is, I don't, I don't understand uh, running on a treadmill at all. I think it's pretty asinine to me for a person to run on a treadmill because we have an entire planet and land to run on. Why are you going to go to the gym and pay all this money just to run on a treadmill? It's just asinine to me. I don't understand it. Well, I mean, and, and I, I don't do it for that reason. Now, yeah. if, uh, back in the day when I was lifting weights, seriously, well, th there you go. I mean, I was getting my money's worth out of it because I was – you know, well, I mean, I, I, that, I choose but. to run. I choose to do weights, and I choose to do elliptical because of my knees. I used to be a runner, mm -hmm. and um, I shot out both my knees. I've had my kneecaps come out of place seven times on the right Ouch. side, four times on the left, and so when that I hurts. run on pavement, it it screws up my feet and it screws up my legs. And I've had tendonitis in both my feet. Um, do you bicycle? Yeah, I can bicycle, but I only can bicycle on a sit-down bicycle. I can't do a sit-over bicycle because mm. I've had spinal replacement and vertebrae oh. in my spine. So as you can hear, I have actually used my body quite a bit in the <laughs> running and the working out and the exercising and the winning of the competitions for many coaches out there. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, I mean, that's the only reason why I do it. You know, the next person said grieving. They said okay. that they are grieving, that they feel like they're walking through fog. All the time. And then it makes everything they do more difficult. It makes finding joy in things that they used to do very difficult. And uh, another person also responded on grief saying that, you know, it packs a, a rough punch. It's unique to one's experience. Um, and they, they said that there was many books and different things that they actually gave friends that were going through grief. Well, I mean, uh, obviously, uh, grieving is uh, a pretty rough time in, in somebody's life, and it tends to kind of take up, uh, you know, your whole waking moment. Yeah, it does take up a lot of your time. I mean, I know uh, I know a lot about grieving. I'll just say that. I, I mean, I'm just being honest, right? I, just, I know a lot about grieving. I was raised by my uh, grandparents, and in the year 2006, February, my grandmother died. In December of 2006 my grandfather died and they were the people that raised me i mean like growing up on all the forms that said parent legal guardian 
it was them. That's, that's they were your parents for for all intents and purposes. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, like they're yeah. my. You know, I mean, they're my parents from the time I came out the womb. Yeah. to the time I, you know, shipped off. So yeah, I, I, mean, I know something about grieving, and on top of that, you know, I lost I lost friends. You know, um, to like violent stuff and everything like that. But uh, I mean, but grief it it go it. It goes away with time. It goes away with time, but you never know, though, how much time it takes. I agree with that. And, and I think when we return, we're going to be talking more about straight-up honesty, raw happiness, and how to get both out of life without that yuck factor. Stay tuned, because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in, we'll be back in two shakes. Turn it up and jump in the deep end on Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. The water's warm, and there's a swim-up bar. Glass of perspective, anyone? Now, here's Ashley. We're going to draw some uh, perspective. We're going to draw uh, a road and some phone poles and a building going into the distance with some mountains and shadows and all that kind of stuff. We're going to do it really fast. Um, You can't do perspective without a horizon that you're looking into the distance at. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And on tonight's show, we've been discussing straight-up honesty and raw happiness and how to get both out of your life without that yuck factor. And when I talk about the yuck factor, I mean assumptions. I mean not understanding somebody's behavior, their actions. You know, making assumptions, being upset, taking it personally. And I think a lot of times when people say things that are off that are off color when people make comments when people respond to us or on the opposite don't respond don't return calls we make assumptions it's all got to be about us but in actuality most people have a lot of issues they're dealing with or one core issue that if you knew about it you could understand the situation so in other words you're saying uh, like if somebody acts a certain way to you and your reaction is yeah <laughs> that's, well, you're like, what a what jerk, you know, yeah. what an ass, you know, like some people just, the way they come off sometimes, especially if it's a friend of yours and you actually care and they just like hang up on you or they do something or they act like a jerk. I mean, you know, your feelings can get very hurt because you care about wh- who, what they are in your life. And and I think if you knew, it doesn't make it right if people are taking out their issues on other people, but it makes it easier to digest when you understand if somebody's going through some big thing in their life. You know, that's what I think. Yeah, I mean, it does make it um, fairly simple to understand how to. I mean, it depends. It really does depend on the situation because the thing is, there are just some things that say people go through that is just unrelatable to the rest of the population. I mean, we have, you know, 2% of the population, war veterans, and stuff like that. And the thing is, though, they got major issues. We have major issues. I should say we. The P- PTSD. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. We have major issues. And it it doesn't matter if someone knows that, you know, I have PTSD. It doesn't matter if anyone knows that at all. Because the thing is, though, at the end of the day, they cannot relate. They just can't. You know, I, I've I've had friends like you know they try and everything like that, but it's like uh, no. I mean, you're close, but you're just not quite there. I mean, like I had people try to relate to me on a, a military sense by like say, like, decorating the room and camouflage and stuff like that, you know, but I'm like, oh, you know, we're not the same, or like, you know, we're in a camouflage bikini or whatever. I'm like, okay, that's amusing, but you never served, you know. And, but, I mean, before the rest of the population, you know, um, some people do go, do go through similar things. They do. And... Like, like you, can, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of people out there who have lost a loved one. Exactly. There's a exactly. lot of people out there who are dealing with uh, weight issues. There's you a know, lot of people out there who are dealing with career issues. Well, I've or, lost yeah, loved ones. I've issues. lost lots of friends. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've yeah. lost about 15, 20 friends of mine yeah, that were very close. There are people that, you know, they, you know, that lost their parents. But now, let, let me, let me ask, ask both of you this, though. Um, even, even if you haven't experienced a certain situation yourself, you know, is it possible that you can kind of imagine how it would feel and, and maybe you don't get it you know r- r- you know hit the bullseye with it but uh, you, wow if that happened to me you know i don't think i'd like it or you know something like that well i think that's all based on perspective and, and yeah. we've talked about this on another show um you know earlier in the week but you know perspective is based on purpose education reason season participation excellence being centered being thoughtful of other people instinct vision energy those things make up for you know perspective and if you can have that type of reasoning and if you're centered 
and you have purpose, I think that you can understand to a degree what someone else is going through. And if one of our listeners did want to listen to previous shows where they could find out about that kind of stuff, where would they go, They could go to AshleyBurgess.com. They could go to iTunes and look up Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Or they can go to Spreaker and look up Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Brand new to Spreaker. It's very easy, very simple. Basically, all you have to do is put in Perspectives with Ashley Burgess into your Google search. Probably not even all that. Probably one of those words. And you will find us. Um, and that's what's so inherently important because this other person actually said that they've dealt with loss of their friends and family, as well as, you know, dealing with the loss of things that used to be a part of their life that are no longer a part of it. And I think grief not only reflects to death, but I think grief can also deal with a loss of a friendship or the end of an error. And I think like, for example, if somebody was very close to you you, and and y'all are no longer friends, you might have to go through a grieving process. And a lot of people in this country, we're into this disposable lifestyle. We're into this fast food of therapy where people want to go to the Walgreens and look at it like a McDonald's and pull up and get their pills and drive away. And they think that's going to change everything. Most people don't ever go through grief. They don't ever allow themselves to go through the process, which means that all that collective baggage will come out at some given point. Yeah, it will. I mean, you can only medicate so much. I mean, as as far as I'm concerned, I think medication is just a bunch of bull. If you ask me, because I think it's like, I don't. I don't know. It's, it's it's like we're we're making up all these you know psychological terms like you know ADD and everything else you know, and it's like you have all these um, doctors. They are medical doctors, and I do give props to doctors, but they just want to constantly give you happy pills. Well, That's you, what they want to do. They want. You know to, why, don't you? I well, mean, because there's well, two well, reasons. Yeah, there's two reasons. But one is because they're being paid by the pharmaceutical company that makes those. Those exactly. Pills. I mean, that's the, why. I mean, so they're profiting off of it. So they're so it's like you can come in there with, you know, whatever. Hey, doc, my parents just died. Okay, here's some happy pills. How good does, is that going to do anyone? It's it's not going to do anyone good. No. Well, you know, pills only work. Pills. Are, I agree with you. Pills are. It's, it's like a band aid, but pills only work in connection with coaching and therapy. And, and that's the reason why I work with a lot of psychiatrists is because psychiatrists refer me clients that want to take to the next level. So they are on medication possibly to level them out. However, medication alone is only a Band-Aid. And if they don't go to the next level and realize what's in their mind, the things that are holding them back, the things that they're dealing with, the nightmares they have at night, the reasons why they do what they do, it's never going to change. They're just going to be in a loop of medication and that loop never really goes to the right level, and it never gets to that next level. You're just constantly going, I don't think the pill's working anymore. And eventually they have to go to another pill, to mm-hmm. another level, because now their body's gotten uh, you know, immune to it, basically. Well, I mean, I, I was going to say, you know, think about medicines or, or drugs in general, okay? It's a chemical. And any time you put a chemical in your body, especially uh, something that's supposed to help like your mood or your psychological state, it's going to affect... You know your brain, yeah, and it how, is. how it operates. It is. I mean, I mean and I, I and I'm all for modern medicine. I really am. You know, vaccinations and everything like that. You know, I'm glad that we have something called the flu shot. I, I really am. But when it comes to like things that are dealing with the brain, especially at an emotional state, I just think the emotional state. Then, to me, medication is just um, it's something that I really. It treats not, the symptoms. It, it, it does. I mean, it you treats know? the symptoms, and then and then on top of that, but you it know, doesn't treat the underlying. I'm problem. like, you have someone, you know, walking around the planet, and they're they're pretty much lying to not only everyone else but themselves because the thing is, they're not being themselves. Right. They're being whatever that drug is telling them to be. See, I mean, you know, Ashley just mentioned it a, a moment ago. I have uh, attention deficit disorder. Mm-hmm. It's not real bad, but but I have it. But I don't take any medication for it because all the medications out there that treat that. Uh, 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 disorder, it, it basically just turns into a zombie. I mean, it, you know, it, it, I feel like I'm stoned all the time if if I take uh, you know what they prescribe for, for me for it. And to me, that's worse. I didn't know you were ever prescribed for anything. Were you? Uh, lo- long time ago. I well, was. I mean, there are. I do agree that there are medications out there that do help. I, they, but they don't do everything. And, and I think sometimes when people do need medication, they do. Some people don't. Like Bill doesn't want medication. He doesn't want to do it. And I understand that too. But th- there is you know, therapy and there is structure and there is help to go to the next level, even if you don't want to take medication. I totally agree with you. Um, let's go to the next one. The next person actually said that they're being sued. So that's a big deal. Lawsuit. Anybody that's going through a big lawsuit, 
Uh, I've been through a lawsuit before, and I know how that feels. And a lot of people are quick to say, I'm going to sue them. I'm going to sue the crap out of them. You know what? I've been in a lawsuit. You know how much fun that is to be in court? You know how much fun that is to present all this evidence? It's awful. It's absolutely awful. It will, Especially divorce court is one of the biggest ones that really takes people. Because, yeah, I mean, uh, and, and of course, uh, half of all marriages end in divorce nowadays. Um, and it's just so personal because at least you thought – uh, at least in, uh, I would hope you think that you were in love with this person enough to, to you know, take the vows and say, okay, I, I love you and I'll spend the rest of my life with you. So you were there in that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, that's, that that's where you were in the time. But, you know, I mean, love can turn to hate really quickly. And, uh, uh, you, you know, if another person says, well, you know, I don't love you anymore and, and, uh, and I don't want to be married to you, you know, for whatever reason, there's a variety of reasons why. Um, and I, I want half your stuff and I want, you know, custody of the kids and, you know, alimony and blah, 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 then, uh, that can get really personal. Well, it's right. already gotten personal. Yeah. yeah it's already yeah. gotten personal. I mean, and now you're going to take you to, now you're going to take you through the mud. Yeah, exactly. It's already got, it's, it, it's, it's gotten personal. Um, I don't know. I never, I never been through a, uh, lawsuit. Um, <laughs> I'm about to crack a joke. Um, as an African American male, I, I I do avoid court like the plague. I, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I, I avoid court like the plague because I, I I know I'm not gonna get a fair shot. Well, I I see court and it's awful, and being sued is not a good thing, or, or vice versa. So stay tuned. When we return. We're gonna be talking about more about how to get up straight up honesty, how to get that raw happiness in life. And how to get both without having that yucky factor of assumption. So stay tuned because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. Be back in two shakes. This is Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess on 570 KLIF. Oh, sh- Swamp leeches, everybody. Check for swamp leeches and pull them off. Nobody else got hit? I'm the only one with steel. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. And on tonight's show, we've been discussing straight-up honesty and raw happiness. How to get both without the yuck factor of assumption. You know, it seems that a lot of us deal with struggles we have an issue that probably plagues us at either given time and a lot of times when people act a certain way or their manner or their mannerisms are a certain way we take it personally when somebody has attitude when somebody doesn't respond to us when somebody um you know cops an attitude quite frankly a lot of times we think it's personal and i think if we knew what everybody was going through had at least an idea, I think the world would be a different place. I think that assumptions would be thrown out the window. Not that it's right that people take things out on other people, but at the same point, we could put it in proper perspective. Right before the break, we were discussing being sued, dealing with a lawsuit, and that can be an overwhelming feeling. Um, it can feel, make you feel powerless, especially depending on how long it's going on. It could be going on for years, and especially if you're having to pay for that as well and it's coming out of your pocket. It can be an overwhelming situation. The next person wrote that they don't know what to do for their 40th anniversary. And they want to do the best thing for their wife because their wife is the queen of their castle. And they're stressed out and they hope that they make the right decision. And for me, that seems like a, that's kind of a cute problem to have. Yeah, you know, of of all the problems you could have, you know. But think about it from this guy's perspective. I mean, being married to somebody... For 10 years seems like an accomplishment nowadays, but 40? Can you imagine 40 years? I mean, that's that's probably over half his life. I couldn't even imagine being alive for 40 years. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's going to stay away from court, and we're, we hope that Keenan stays alive past 40. Yeah, so, so do I. You know, we'll so, have a big uh, party when that Yeah, happens. so just, just stay away from court, and you'll be okay, Keenan. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so uh, you know, this woman has taken up you know, basically the, the majority of his life, and he feels the need to, I guess, show his appreciation. So, I mean, and he cares so much about her. Yeah. So, so I, I think this is kind of going back to to what I was saying. Even though I haven't, I mean, I've never been married. Period. But uh, I, I could see myself in that situation where, you know, uh, golly, how do how do I tell the person I spent just spent forty years of my life with? That I love them. Yeah, they're the queen of my castle. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. And you know, it, it's a good feeling. You know, you wonder too, though, have. 
you wonder if somebody has expressed the way they really feel to their wife. You know, I think sometimes in our in our culture and in our society, um, we tell people we love them and stuff like that, but maybe they don't know to the degree. Well, and also too, you know, perhaps men of his. I'm going to assume that your uh, uh, writer there is male, but uh, uh, he's a man. No okay, man. so men of his generation were probably taught to, you know, don't let your emotions show. Probably you know, and probably you know uh, you know maybe he, he maybe he even of course I'm uh, I may be making a, mis- a mistake of making an assumption here and you know what Ashley said about assumptions but uh, you know maybe you know uh, hey baby I love you or whatever but maybe you know he's never just like you know I love you you know and just kind of you know did it in a personal that way that way um, I, although I think society is getting better about letting men you know show their emotions like that um, you know then. Uh, you know, that may be, you know, something that's stressing him out. It could, I, th- I think it's kind of cool, though. I well, think that's wouldn't one that be of those positive stress, want. though? Positive stress? Is yeah. there? Is, uh, yeah, actually, is I there think it's positive. Yeah, and uh, I mean, actually, there is a such thing as positive stress. There really is. I don't know if if if. I mean, if it's stressing that? you, well, if, if it's causing you to worry, maybe to, to lose sleep, if it's affecting your heart rate, if it's affecting your well being, then can it be positive? Well, I mean, professional athletes go through uh, positive stress whenever they play a game, and it helps them perform better. Okay. So, well, I'm, so I mean, for him to be stressed out, you know, that his 40th anniversary is coming up, I mean, I, I think that's a good thing because the thing is, at the end of the day, whatever he decides to do, I, I mean... It'll be the right thing. It, yeah, it's going to be the right thing because he put in a lot of thought and a lot of effort into it. And so... What do whatever you come up with, your wife is gonna love it. She is because you put in a lot of time and a lot of effort. I'm like, I know you're stressing out about it, but just I don't know, just go, I don't I don't know when it's coming up or anything like that. But just give it time, and then boom, something's gonna come up in your head, and it's gonna be just totally fabulous. I'm telling you. So, so don't be. don't don't stress it. <laughs> you know, to relax. It, it it'll come. Yeah, uh, it, it'll come. I'm like, you know, I mean, it'll, it'll come. But you know, however, I'm um, that stress. I mean, that's. It, I mean, it's a boost in this brain pattern pattern though. So he's so he's racking his brain, and the thing is, he's gonna come up with something good. I'm like, hey, I'll I'll I'll, I'll tell you what uh, Frederick Nietzsche says. Um, what he says, he says, uh, walk um, a true thought. A, a truly well out thought comes from walking. So, dude, go for a walk. I like that. Yeah, and it'll clear your mind. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm paraphrasing right now, but I know like Nietzsche. For, yeah, Nietzsche was he's, he was a really big like you know thinking of ideas while walking. So, if you want to think of an idea, go for a walk, and boom, something will come up in although, your head. Although, d- don't do it like Keenan and don't go out in nature. Just go 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 in the middle of I, the city and walk around in the concrete downtown. <laughs> I, I like to actually take a shower. That helps, and even going to the bathroom for goodness sakes helps too. I can clear your mind at a meeting. You know what I mean? You go well, to the bathroom, it, you walk. Going in to the there. bathroom clear something. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it down. All right, the next person said uh, cancer. Oy, that's heavy. So cancer, and another person said life in general. And so I think that these issues are kind of big. And I, and I think in anybody that's going through cancer and dealing with um, the scaredness and, and the stress of cancer have all legitimate right to be scared. I, you know, and, and I think in those situations, a lot of times it's hard for us to see the big picture. And also it's hard for us to look outside of what people are telling us we have to do. And sometimes it's about finding the alternative option. And and I think I think when you're dealing with any of those big ones, especially the C word, um, my honest, wise opinion is to always venture to the things that they don't really necessarily tell you about. And I know this sounds interesting, but there's a lot of different treatments and other options that can be tried before you go to the big options. And I do think it's important. There's a big thing called diet too, and there's a there's a there's a particular diet out there, and um, I actually have the entire big book on it, and it is absolutely an amazing diet. And I've had several friends actually cure themselves of cancer over multiple times, and you, if you eat a certain way, and it is a very strict, strict diet. There is no alcohol. There is no milk. There's certain waters. There's certain vitamins. It, it's so regimented. But if you follow this regimen, I've seen people actually cure themselves of cancer. And, I mean, those are like – it's called the Gershon. It's the Gershon diet. And, and there's certain things that if you listen – they're not – you know, certain people aren't going to tell you about that because they don't even know that it exists. 
But there's certain things that it's hard to look at it when you're in under that microscope. But I think we've talked about this in past shows is to get a bird's eye view sometimes that normally can help you because it's how you try to divide the emotion because it seems that when we make an emotional decision, we might not always make the right one for our health. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I know if uh, the doctor told me that I've got, uh, you know, six months or less to live, uh, then, uh, I mean, heck, at that point, what have you got to lose? Oh, I agree. I mean, what do you have to lose? I mean, but I think, you sh- yeah, you should try anything. And, and I think there's a lot of different remedies. And, and I think also, you know, it's interesting when you take your life in your own hands and you stop allowing people to basically use you as a puppet and tell you what to do, all of a sudden things kind of change in your life. And that's what I did years ago with my own health. Um, you know, we have a lot of people also that are talking about having to go get a vasectomy. And, ah. and they talked about how they're currently at the urologist talking about vasectomy. You tell me what the issue is. So that could be interesting. <laughs> did, did they really write that? <laughs> yes, they said, you tell me. <laughs> Exclamation point. Um, also, um, another friend wrote, um, and, and another listener said, starting over again and at the age of 52. Reinvention. So we have reinvention and we have um, stopping of the kids. You, you know, it, it, isn't it interesting you know, you ask people, okay, what are your issues? And we're just getting uh, answers. Just, I mean, we're covering the spectrum, aren't we? Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, mm-hmm. it, just what people see, seem to, you know, uh, believe that issues are or should be. And it's crazy how, honestly, these are the least things you would ever think about. You're never going to see, you know, Han- Henry or John or Michael or Allison or Lisa and know, oh, okay, they're going through a midlife crisis. Or, oh, okay, they must have cancer. Or, oh, okay, their mom must have just died. I mean, we don't know any of that stuff. And also, Lisa, John, or Henry look at you and they're, they're a total ass to you. And you go, what, jerk? But, you know? they, but they will tell a complete stranger. They will tell a complete they, they stranger. Will, they will tell a complete stranger. I re- I remember um, I was um, I was riding a train and um, I um, get off the train to take the bus. Well, I'm at the bus stop and this guy he's smoking something very potent. Okay. <laughs> and he uh, and the thing is he just looks like you know just a regular like uh, you know white guy in his forties. And I'm like, dude, you're just out here like smoking that like we're in you know in one of those yeah yeah Amsterdam or something like that you know. And the thing is. He stops inhaling and he looks at me with like a straight face, dead in the eyes, and he says, "I have stage four cancer." What are you gonna do? <laughs> what, are you, what are you gonna do to him? You gonna put him in jail? Yeah, that, that's what he said to me. He's just like he's done. Like you were saying earlier, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So when we return, we we're talking about how to be straight up honest, how to find raw happiness in your life, and how to get both of those without the yuck factor. Stay tuned because perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. We'll be back in two shakes. I could lift you up I could show you what you want to see And take you where you want to be Get in here and give us your perspective We're listening You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess Welcome back live to Perspectives And I'm your host Ashley Burgess And on tonight's show we've been discussing Straight up honesty and raw happiness How to get both Without the yuck factor. You know, a lot of times we don't realize what other people are struggling with. And we don't have the proper perspective. We don't understand why they're acting a certain way. Why they have a certain attitude. Why they aren't responding. Why they are responding in a mean way. We don't get it because we don't know what the issues they're dealing with. And not that it makes it right that they're taking it out on you. However, life would be a lot easier to understand folks if you knew what they were dealing with. Right before the break, we talked about one person was dealing with cancer. Another person had a problem with life. One person was at the urologist talking about a vasectomy. One other person was having to start over with their life at age 52, reinvention. And I think anybody that's had to do that knows that that's, that's starting over from scratch. Yeah. You know, especially if you're going through a divorce or a change and you're having to find a new job and everything. It's, it's hard. You it's know, hard. And, and actually, real quickly, I, mean, I just want to uh, thank our listeners for uh, providing us uh, this feedback tonight. Uh, and, and I just want to encourage uh, all of you out there to uh, you know, go on Facebook, go on Twitter, and uh, keep them coming. Because we are uh, reading them, and uh, we do appreciate you participating. We do. And, and, I mean, one other person talked about how, you know, there's different issues that they have. But I, I like this one. No issues as long as they're breathing. And I like that person. They were saying, I don't have any That's issues a good as long as I'm alive. And that is an interesting perspective because I think a lot of times we don't really think about that. And I hear that a lot of times when I'm like walking through a restaurant or I'll say, hey, have a good day. And they're like, hey, at least I'm six feet up. I'm not, I'm not six feet down. Interesting concept. 
I mean, I, I think, yeah, Kenyon, I mean, it's a good one because, you know, even though, you know, when something, let's say something bad, I mean, is, is happening to you, it's hard, you know, because it's right in front of your face, right? Mm-hmm. And it's hard to see anything else. But it could be worse. Yeah. It could be dead. Yeah. I mean, like, you, you could uh, uh, live in Liberia and uh, have to, you know, fight <laughs> Ebola, you know, if you forget being here in the United States. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I remember. Uh, I remember someone, someone, um, female, said something uh, derogatory to me about uh, you know not having a car and walking. And I looked at her and I said, "I came back from a war with both my legs." Some guys didn't. <laughs> yeah, some guys did it. <laughs> so, That's a big deal. I mean, you can walk. And I mean, forget about uh, with your legs and walking. You came back alive. Yeah, well, some yeah. guys didn't. Not in a body bag. Well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty big time. One other person said that they can't stay here. They could not tell their issue online and did not want to. Okay. Uh, one person said it's too much going on at once and their anxiety and depression sucks. Hmm. And I think anybody that's overwhelmed with anxiety and depression just dealing with everyday life can be hard, much less if you have a lot of issues and stress in your life. Uh, I think that sometimes when people deal with a lot of anxiety and depression, a lot of times it could be family or other induced around you as well as you know, there is a medication management, but there's also figuring out and understanding where the anxiety is coming from. And, and I think that that comes from a lot of coaching and a lot of real cognitive um, therapy. Well, it, again, it goes back to what we were talking about in the, in the first segment, I think it was. Uh, you know, uh, uh, medicines, drugs, they'll, they'll treat the symptoms, but it's a Band-Aid. It's not really curing the underlying problem. So, so if, if you have anxiety, uh, you know, that's kind of your psychological state. And, okay, the medicine will treat the symptoms, but uh, you're right, Ashley. You, you need life coaching, maybe even psychiatric care. I mean, you, you know? need to find out what's causing the anxiety. Yeah. I'm, it, like, I'm, like, what, I'm like, what is the bottom line behind it? Because the thing is, uh, pe- people, not everyone reacts the same to a certain situation. You know, and, like, some people react with anxiety and stress and everything else. And you put another person, a different person, that same reaction, and they just may not react at all. I mean, it's the equivalent of, I don't know, uh, just well, like for me, you know, being downtown and, you know, someone, you know, decides to, you know, decides to uh, start, a, start a fight with me, right? A physical fight. Okay. I'm good at that. I can handle that fine. You know, I can go through it and like not even be upset or anything else. I mean, I could like, I you know, physical pain. I can deal with that. Now, there's other things, you know. I know I'm not so good at, you know, and I'm sure everyone else is the same way. Yeah. So, when it comes, uh, so it, it's one of those things when you got to like, you know, find out what what is like really the bottom line, like what is really going on, and you know. So, I don't know. Like sometimes, um, I remember when I was when I was on duty, yeah. and I had to respond to a situation. You know, one of the first questions I used to ask, and like, you know, whenever that person was like distressed out and everything else, the first person I used to ask whenever I had to respond to a situation. And like, some of those situations were even like attempted suicide. Mm-hmm. First question I would ask is this How much have you ate today? Ah. Mm hmm. How much have you ate food? If if if, if person doesn't eat, that, that can put them in a bad mood pretty <laughs> yeah, fast. Eat and sleep are, are very essential. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, they're very essential, you know? Yeah. So, like, yeah, I remember I responded to one situation. It was a domestic violence, mm-hmm. domestic violence, and the thing is the guy just got back from being deployed. And he's standing there, and he's a little off. But I asked his wife, I said, uh, how much has he ate today? She said he had a cracker, a saltine. I was like, okay. So, you know, my partner who I was on, on duty with, you know, I'm like, hey, I'm going to take him. Well, no, take him in. I'm going to go to the uh, base kitchen, grab him something to eat, have him eat. Then we're going to question him. Well, I mean, uh, there you go, Ashley. I mean, uh, you know, different people react to different situations, you know. I, I totally agree. And I think anxiety and depression, though, do suck. And it's like if you are dealing with that, you know, figuring out where it's coming from, but also if there's anything that's actually – kind of aiding and abetting and lighting that fire is also particular to you. And a lot of times that can come from our past. I work with clients on that on a daily basis and we work to get to the root of the cause. And then that also helps take away the anxiety, the depression, and we start to work to build up uh, the self-esteem. Uh, some people made jokes, um, you know, because, you know, joking is, is, is good medicine. Kind of gallows humor type. Yeah. Everyone you know. likes the funny guy. 
Yeah. Yeah, like I'm too handsome and being so darn handsome. Wait, wait, wait. What, what's uh, being too handsome? Yes, yeah, being too <laughs> oh handsome. Oh, my gosh. And um, other people said a, a pimple on their butt. Um, and then um, so other people talked about uncertain futures, and but they feel like they are in the right place and they're not going to give in to fear. Um, one person said, hey, give me a call. <laughs> Good grief. Um, one person said that they've been locked out of their iPhone. Now that's an emergency. That's a first world problem. I, yeah, <laughs> it's a first world problem, but I know several people, Keenan, uh, uh, several people come to mind that they would absolutely panic and freak. I, one sitting across the table from us. Oh, don't point fingers. Oh, don't point fingers oh, and name you, names. No, 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 don't point fingers. You would. You would, too. You, you, you would. You would. You would panic. You would panic. Maybe I would, too, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> um, one person said, I'm awesome. Thank you. Um, and another person said that they make a very good salary, yet they um, are an alcoholic and homeless at this point in time. Mm. And that um, being a drunk isn't cheap. And I think anybody that's going through addiction of alcohol or drugs and it is impeding your ability to have a home and to live um, with food and shelter um, needs to, you know, actually think about heading into rehabilitation. I, I think at this point in time when you're able to acknowledge the fact that you have a problem and I understand that. Um, some rehabs only have a 7% uh, rate of, of, of a good chance of curing you, but I think it's all about you. If you want to change and you want to change your life, uh, I think you have to find your purpose. Maybe making that, that certain uh, salary isn't your purpose. You need to find that. Once you find that, drinking yourself to death is not going to help you get there. That's correct, I mean, and I can relate to that uh, from my own experience. Now, Fortunately, I didn't become an alcoholic or, or an addict. But uh, I was in a profession that I was just not happy with and got to the point where I was really, literally willing to do anything else but to do that, to do what I was doing. So you got it. You yeah. finally got to the point where you were done. And I, and I think that happens for alcohol and drugs as well, but you have to find your purpose. So I think the one thing that we're taking out of tonight's show, and there's probably several things that you are, is to understand that a lot of people are struggling with various things. We don't have the ability to read their mind necessarily. You can be intuitive. However, if people were straight up and honest, there would be complete raw happiness. And I think once you realize, though, that people are going through these problems in life, I think you can understand that when people make off comments or they have an off attitude, don't take it personally. Because if you don't take it personally and you live your life and you find happiness, you'll have straight up honesty and be honest with people. Because I think people would rather have the honest truth than the BS. And I think that that also leads to the raw happiness. And you no longer have that yuck factor of assumption and denial. Keenan, what a great show tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Bill, awesome as always. Well, and, and I also want to thank, again, uh, our listeners uh, for uh, providing uh, the feedback uh, again to us. And, uh, again, every week we uh, blog live on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and, uh, you know, we really do encourage you to share your thoughts and feelings. And, uh, you know, who knows? You may be lucky enough we'll read it over the air. We, you will. And, by the way, I think Keenan has to go because he's got to eat some dinner. He's starving. <laughs> it's, 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 I think it's been like 10 minutes since he ate last. So, yeah. yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, part I, hamster, I, part man. Yes, I, am, yes. I, I am. I'm hungry. I, just, I, I want something to eat. I really do. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in tonight. We have a great show for you next week. Perspectives with Ashley Burgess, your host. We'll be back in, uh, be back in three shakes.